The last part of my presentation is the most exciting part is the media coverage. How did the Western mainstream media <laughs> cover the war? Now, in general, I believe there is no word can describe the collective attitude of the Western mainstream media, I will call it the MSM, towards the ongoing war between the Syrian Arab army and the radical Islamist groups in general and in Aleppo in particular. Perhaps, I believe one needs a new kind of dictionary to understand the nature of this desperate attitude that hysterically accuses the Syrian army and its allies of committing atrocities such as genocide, quote unquote, and ethnic cleansing, quote unquote, without any credible evidence. Since the beginning of the war, the mainstream media has highly relied on secondhand sources unnamed activists, we don't know, who, who is this? Abu Muhammad al-Halabi, I don't know, Abu Ahmad al-Suri, nobody knows who are these people, and some of them live in Europe, and they make phone calls telling uh, these media outlets what's happening in Aleppo. And, this, and also they relied on highly compromised organizations, such as the White Helmets. Now, there is this beautiful White Helmets everywhere in Syria, they just take photos, they do in five minutes beautiful montage. I've been working on, on uh, video montage for a long time and I know how it's difficult to do this job. And they just, there is a bomb and after five minutes it's all done with montage and sound effects and everything. They did the render and they upload it on YouTube. I don't know how, <laughs> how they do it, you know. It's, it, it's, it's against any logic. And what happened in Aleppo during the military operations to liberate it from Al Nusra Front, Ahrar al-Sham, Nurdin Zinki? Nurdin Zinki is a Pentagon backed uh, uh, group. According to the Pentagon, they say we paid these people millions of dollars. And Nurdin Zinki, they behead kids in, in Syria. They behead kids, 12 year old kids. They behead them in the streets. So their attitude was uh, unprecedented for me. Major corporate media outlets, particularly the CNN, BBC, the Channel 4, in addition to their sister outlets, of course, like Jazeera and Arabia, have launched a massive propaganda campaign to exert maximum pressure on the Syrian and the Russian governments in order to foil the liberation of the eastern neighborhoods of Aleppo from the western backed Islamist militants. Now, the desperation of the mainstream media has reached a critically embarrassing point. I mean, I, I, I couldn't imagine to see someone like uh, Bilal Abdul Karim. He is an Al Qaeda affiliate uh, journalist, quote unquote. He was identified by CNN as an independent journalist. Bilal Abdul Karim is an American and Al Qaeda operative and not a journalist. He's been hanging around the most notorious foreign jihadists operating in Syria, including Abu Faris al-Suri, who was killed by US drone attack, and Saudi jihadi cleric Abdullah al-Muhaysini. He has survived, allegedly, US drone strike in Idlib. In summer 2016, he snuck into Aleppo with the jihadi forces that tried to invade the city. But Bilal got trapped in Aleppo. I will show you a video on CNN. This is so funny because a guy like Bilal Abdul Karim was on All right, we'll take CNN. Independent journalist. By the way, Hala Gorani is Syrian. <laughs> Just saying. You know, uh, the uh, regime is not in control of all of Eastern Aleppo. Um, therefore, that's why the agreement uh, had to be put in place so that they could get the rest of the control, so they could, uh, con they could take control of the rest of Eastern Aleppo uh, from rebel forces without there being further bloodshed. Uh, but to say that they're in control of Eastern Aleppo at the moment is inaccurate, and neither was this a counter-terrorism operation. Look. With a suicide bomber. The same guy in East Aleppo with a suicide bomber. And 
as you can see, this is what he's wearing. This is what a lot of the fighters are wearing. Why? Because they don't feel that they can trust the regime to maintain its word that they will have the safe passage to leave. And if they are stopped, they are prepared for a fight. Yeah, they are prepared to fight. Ah. <sighs> There was another fake news in, in during this operation, which was uh, being prepared in uh, the port of Said in Egypt. Uh, the Egyptian uh, authorities, they stormed the uh, scene and they captured few people. They were filming a scene in port of Egypt, uh, trying to uh, uh, filming or uh, acting as if it is in Aleppo. Okay, and they were captured. There are also many videos you can, you can just check on, on the YouTube. Uh, another example was uh, the rebels, they killed a Syrian Armenian swimmer. Her name is, uh, 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 she was tw 12 years old and her brother, 12 years old, were murdered by a rocket from the militant side. Now the independent here, they accused the government and Russia for killing uh, the, the swimmer. I myself and many other activists, we organized a campaign and we went on the independent page on Facebook and we posted comments telling that you are lying. She died in a government-held area with her brother by uh, the, these uh, so-called rebels that you support. And many of her relatives, including her family members, they did the comment. So what did the independent do at that time? They didn't apologize, of course. They edited the article after a couple of hours. They added a paragraph, says, a number of commentators claimed the deaths were a result of rebel-led attack, although those claims could not be verified. They can verify that the government killed her without knowing that lying, but they cannot verify that we are telling the independent that this little kid, she was killed by these rebels. There is a very funny thing that happened in the last days of uh, the occupation of Aleppo or when the army was trying to liberate. The final messages from Aleppo. Everybody is taking selfies, those from the rebel side. This is my final message. We will die. Just one hour. After one hour, we will die. And this is one of the videos that I found on, on, on the internet. It's beautiful. Final messages are flying out of the This may be my last video. This might be uh, a <laughs> <Yes. laughs> This last video. <laughs> It's almost as if they were hoping these final messages would trend and get picked up by mainstream media. From both parties, people are running, they just go there, just running. We are here for these attendance literally. They all have internet in East Aleppo, while the entire Aleppo doesn't have electricity or internet. No message, no strategy, no politics, just people simply fighting for their lives. One day, saying goodbye to the world on social media, the next day giving interviews to BBC, CNN, and Al Jazeera, all in prime time. Well, they're not. These are activists. Some of them just recently joined Twitter and clearly support the revolution. They have thousands of followers. Some call themselves journalists that are verified on Facebook, like Bilal Abdul Karim, an American who has no problem pushing on this for propaganda. You know, the rebel. This guy is a member of the White Helmets, who were founded by a British ex-military officer and have been funded with millions by the US and UK. And then there's a little girl named Bana, also joined Twitter not so long ago, in September. She's already verified and has over 200,000 followers. Bana is seven years old and tweets in perfect English from the heart of East Aleppo with a little help from her mom. She, of course, also had a final message just in time. So what do all of these people have in common? They want you to think there's one side to the story, one truth, that Aslan is randomly going from city to city and killing his own people for some crazy reason with the help of Russia, even though the whole world is watching every step. They want you to think that these civilians pouring out of Aleppo are running from genocide committed by the Syrian army 
and those who celebrate on the street are dancing on children's graves. While Al Qaeda infiltrated rebels are bravely and heroically defending civilians in East Aleppo. The question is, do you buy it? Because millions of people do. Only one last thing I will mention about this Bana al Abed. Bana is seven years old kid. So when the war erupted in Syria, she was one year old. She has no clue what's going on around her. She's been used by her mother and a bunch of people, uh, of course, they are PR experts. They use this seven years old kid to send messages. And uh, even the media, they said, she represents the voice and the conscience of, of Aleppo. And she even called for World War III. Uh, she said, it's better for uh, Russia and America to do World War III than Assad uh, occupy uh, East Aleppo. And this kid who writes perfect English, and she's very fine, over 400,000 followers now on Twitter. Believe me, she doesn't speak English. I will show you the video that she doesn't speak any English. Bill Fram in Eastern Aleppo is seven year old. A song about children of war. Always. She's always reading from a paper by her mother, and in her last interview on CNN, there was a prompter, and, and, and the, in front of her, she's reading from the prompter. And now look how she. And she says she is sad that the world did nothing to help them. Jake. Of course, sometimes I speak fast, and I have a South African accent. My name is Imran. I have a South African accent, so sometimes you won't understand me, and that's okay. <laughs> What's your favorite kind of food in Istanbul? And of course, we have Musayba on the side here, so if you really don't understand me, you can ask Musayba and she can help. Okay? okay? Now, I have one question for you before we, we talk to everybody else, before anybody else's questions come. Do you like the food in Istanbul? Yes. What do you like? See. What's your best dish? Save the children of Syria. This is the only thing that this girl knows. They are using this girl, exploiting her for their political uh, agenda. This is overall that I tried to summarize everything. So as you can see, the mainstream media, especially in the West, they have gone insane over Aleppo, employing their best abilities to attack the Syrian and Russian governments. There is a Lebanese political researcher, his name is Hossam uh, Mata. He believes that this hysteria uh, by the so-called liberals in the West and the leftists is a defense mechanism to justify their alignment with the terrorist leaders of the western back revolution, such as the Saudi radical cleric Abdullah al-Muhaysini and the leader of Al-Qaeda in Syria, Abu Muhammad al-Jolani. I'm finished. I will show you this map. And uh, this, this is how was Aleppo in late 2012 and beginning of 2013. Only these reds were the government held areas. And now 2016 and 2017, the government, with the help of our allies, they uh, liberated the city. And a special thanks, of course, to Hamza Suleiman and uh, Yusha Youssef. They are you can find them on social media. They do great maps every day on the developments, the military developments in Syria and in all the fronts. So that was everything I, would, I wanted to deliver to you.